drifted into the lunar darkness, Apollo 17 became the only night launch of the program. Gene Cernan, like John Young on the previous mission, would finally have an opportunity to walk on the moon. Apollo 17's target was Taurus Littrow on the southeast corner of the Sea of Serenity. With Cernan in the lunar module Challenger was geologist Jack Schmidt, the first professional scientist to visit the moon. Above them, command module pilot Ron Evans maintained the equipment aboard America. Apollo 17 was to be the crowning achievement of the program, and the crew did not disappoint. Theirs was a record-setting mission. At 12 days, 13 hours, and 51 minutes, it was the longest voyage. It was the longest time spent on the surface of the moon, and the longest spent on EVAs. Cernan and Schmidt left Challenger for three work periods, each time for more than seven hours. They traveled 21 miles in the third lunar rover. And they returned with a record load of moon material, 243 pounds. Scattered throughout these accomplishments were the same periods of playfulness that had been part of the previous moonwalks. I was strolling on the moon one day in a merry, merry month of December. Now, May. May, May's the month. May, that's right. May is the year of the month. Each flight had a, and each part of every flight was special, I think, for each one of us. I suppose uh, if you want to zero in on, on something that people get more interested in is the fact that when that engine lights, when you lift off the surface of the moon, you're a long way from home, and a lot of things got to happen, but at least you're beginning to, in spite of the fact that you had a good time, you're at least headed in the right direction. At 5.55 p.m. on Thursday, December 14, 1972, Challenger lifted from the surface. Humans would not return for the remainder of the century. <laughs> 